Attaching the hose to this RV was not very easy. We thought that this was a great use of space. The simple device we found is this Save-A-Drop water gauge. This is one of my favorite items. It's a wide-handled hitch pin. Leaving this place, the sun's about to break. Y'all riding shotgun. I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive. Hi, I'm Louise. And I'm George. And we recently published a video on small RV accessories. And after we published it, we found a whole bunch more. So we decided to do another video to share these other little items that have made a very big difference in this lifestyle. Right. These are all small and inexpensive accessories that have a huge impact on this lifestyle. We found them very useful, so if you have other items like this that you find very useful, please leave a comment below and let us know what those items are. Let's share ideas with each other. Sometimes the small things make a really big difference. And if you haven't seen that other video, I'll, I'll put a link up here somewhere. We don't use this ladder. This ladder is to get up into the um, over the cab sleeping area but um, we don't use it. But we didn't want to get rid of it. We thought that this was a great use of space. We have these um, small plastic see-through containers. This one is taller. These two are shorter, but um, it's great for little items like um, sunscreen and bug spray and um, things that we want at ready, lens cleaner, a flashlight. These bungee cords, they're about a foot long. These actually came with our wheel covers, but we found ourselves not using them. Um, there's uh, neat little hooks at the end of them and such, but you could use any bungee cord as long as it holds this in place. All of this can stay right where it is when we're driving down the road and such, and um, doesn't even rattle. It's, it's been a great little addition. This next item uh, we researched to find out a solution for probably the second or third, maybe the fourth campground we ever pulled into. Attaching the hose to this RV was not very easy. Um, this little tiny plastic attachment point, uh, very hard to get your fingers on. It's just a very small knob. It's plastic. It was almost impossible to attach a hose to it without it leaking. So we found this 45 degrees hose elbow that is perfect for this. Uh, you install it once, and once we got it installed tight enough so that it didn't leak, we attached a quick connect to it. And because it's 45 degrees, it aligns almost perfectly with the hose access port in this bay. We tried a 90 degree one, but the angle wasn't right. So we tried the 45 degree one, and it works perfectly. It makes setting up when you arrive at a campground so much easier especially in this RV where this space is so small and getting this connection tight enough so that it didn't leak was really a challenge. And this changed our life. I mean, it, it really enhanced our quality of life, if you will, at least during setup. I had these hooks in my car before we transitioned to this lifestyle and just found them really, really helpful. And so I brought them in here and they are fantastic. We have a couple in the Jeep. We have a couple in here and it just, it lifts my pocketbook and my bag up off the floor. I always know where they are, but yet somehow I feel like they have a spot and, um, and it's a lot more organized. You, we got these from Amazon. They are called headrest hooks and, um, they come in packages of, uh, six and I highly recommend them. They're fantastic. Another simple device we found is this Save-A-Drop water gauge. Uh, when we're going to be traveling from one campground to another, we'll only put on maybe five gallons of fresh water, uh, just enough so that we can flush the toilet a few times during our, our drive. I just attach it after my water filter and in, in, in between my hose. Um, it allows me to monitor the amount of water that I'm putting into the fresh water tank. Um, that way it gives me some peace of mind that I'm not putting on too much water or even not enough water. And I added the quick connect 
attachments to it so that uh, it's trivial to, to attach it to the hose. George installed these drawers when we first bought the RV. They've been fantastic. I guess they're junk drawers, but um, I keep things that, you know, little things that I want readily available that would probably otherwise just be all over the place. Um, you know, scissors and tape and a box cutter and a uh, small measuring tape, my earbuds, you know, pens, pencils, whatever. It's just really great to be able to just reach in and have them right there. Um, they hold a lot. George has one here and mine is here. And um, he also put Velcro on them so that I can lock it in place as part of my interior packup so that they don't slide open and end up on the floor when we're traveling. Ask us how we know. This table is uh, a piece of styrofoam with some laminate on both sides of it. So putting screws into it is not going to be very secure. So I did, I did both. I did the screws, but I also put some uh, VHB tape in between here so that it would not come off. Speaking of Velcro straps, I, this, this is one of my pet peeves, wires. <laughs> They really do look very messy, but with the Velcro straps that we have found in two different sizes, by the way, this one's a little bit bigger than this one. I'm able to just simply fold up the straps on a regular basis. Use the Velcro to tie them. And then another use of command strips and command containers. Put them right there. They're readily available, but yet everything's neatened up and organized. So it just, I think, makes a huge difference. We have them everywhere because, you know, you have cords everywhere. <laughs> um, just a great little item. What I like to do with them is just do half the cord as secured. I can use just the amount of cord that I need without having cord tangled up all over the place. That way there. This isn't all piled up over here. It's kind of out of the way. And then when it's time to pack it up. I just undo half of the strap, coil them up, and then secure it. And when I'm ready to use it the next time, I can just unravel half of it, take the cord out, and set it up. This is a small ceramic heater. It's uh, 1500 watts and we use it on the chilly mornings or sometimes we leave it connected all night long. That's why this is there. Um, I'm particularly light sensitive and there's a blue light that just stays on all the time. Makes me insane. So George put this um, little flap on so that we don't see all the lights in the middle of the night. And you just have to be a little bit uh, cautious with this kind of thing. You don't want to put it somewhere that a pet or a person is going to knock it down because it doesn't have an automatic shut off. So just be aware of that um, and, and be careful of that for the one that you buy. We find that this one is just the right size. It's easy to store. It has a nice little handle here. And um, we've been using it for many years and just really um, find it very effective for our needs. These next two items, are going to talk about them at the same time because they kind of go together. Uh, they're actually connected together. And the first one is the uh, RV pressure regulator. Uh, we learned uh, through many forums that water pressure in a lot of parks can vary dramatically. And some of them can be way, way too high for the design of these RVs. So we invested in one right away. This is the one we're using. I'll put a link below. 
but uh, this is actually our third one. <laughs> Early on, I just kept forgetting to take them off the pedestal when we left the campground. It has saved us many, many, many times. I've seen water pressure over 60 PSI, and uh, that's way too high for these RVs. I like this one because it's, the pressure is adjustable. I can set it and forget it. I don't have to worry about it, and I can monitor the pressure uh, especially when it's low pressure. It'll show me that it's low pressure, and that way I know it's not some other problem. It's just that the water pressure is low. It's served us very well. Uh, the second item is this simple hose Y connection. It allows us to connect the water filter to one side, and we have the other side available for something else that we want to, to connect and get a source of water. In our case, unfiltered water. Uh, I tend to use it for connecting our flush hose to our black tank flush portal, and I can flush our black tank without having to disconnect the water system. Um, I can just attach a dedicated hose to the other side of that Y connection and connect the other end of the hose to the, uh, the flush port, turn on the valve, and flush the black tank. So those two things kind of go together, and I think that they're essential parts of our equipment. Very simple things, but I think they make a big difference. We really enjoy hiking and walking, but what we don't enjoy is dirty boots and dirty sneakers. Um, bringing that back into the RV before putting them in where we store them, it just can really add up to a lot of dirt and debris if we don't keep up with them. So when we get home from hiking or walking, we simply take this, um, it's really a pot scrubber. We specifically chose it because it had, has um, the smaller things for in grooves and then this is um, strong enough to really clean up your boots after a nice hike. Just a small little tool that has made a very big difference. This is one of my favorite items. It's a wide handled hitch pin. It just makes it easier to detach the Jeep because the original hitch pins that came with the Blue Ox was just a wire O-ring and you could put one finger through it and try to pull the pin out. This one allows you to put four fingers through and put a lot more pressure on the pin in order to remove it. Sometimes when we go to disconnect the Jeep, we're parked on a hill and uh, that puts a lot of pressure on the pin and sometimes I'd have to start the Jeep put it in gear and try to either back it up or pull it a little forward to take some tension off of the pin. With this hitch pin, we can usually just give it a twist or two and it comes right out and put a lot more pressure on it. Sometimes it's still too tight and we still have to move the Jeep, but for the most part, we can pull these pins out much easier. So I would say these are life-changing. Our water system uses a lot of connections. First, we use the Clear 2.0 pre-filter and cheap and expensive water filter. And then the hoses get attached to that. And we also use this save a drop water gauge. And in order to make those connections a lot easier to do, um, I install these uh, quick release connectors from Walmart. Uh, they come on a four pack, I believe. And uh, they just make set up and tear down a little easier. Wouldn't call them life-changing, but uh, they do make life a little easier. And they're cheap and easy to use. I've been using these probably for about two years and they've stood up pretty well. As we travel, we found that the water quality around the country varies. There are some areas where the water is very hard, uh, has a lot of uh, minerals in it. And uh, occasionally these things start to get built up with residue and the mechanism doesn't quite work as well. Um, I find that just taking a, a brass wire brush and just scraping off some of the hard minerals that are on there just keeps them working more efficiently. I also found that a little bit of peppermint oil, I put a drop or two on them just to lubricate it a little bit without using some toxic oil has a pleasant smell. I mean, I wouldn't want to spray WD-40 on this because it is a fresh water connection, so peppermint oil seems to work. First time I had to do this was maybe after using these for about a year or so. I started seeing some buildup of minerals. This helps them 
function a lot nicer. This is a, a cheap utility light and its only real purpose in our life is I can put this in the wet bay of the RV when the temperatures are going to go down below freezing. It's a simple 40 watt bulb. It put out, puts out a, just enough heat to, uh, to keep the plumbing inside of the wet bay from freezing when the temperatures get low. Now we've always spent our winters in Florida and there have been a couple of occasions where the temperature would go down below freezing uh, for a few hours at night. And uh, this really came into play in that situation where I would just disconnect all of the, of the hoses and I would pack them up and put them into the shower in our bathroom. And then I would plug this into the pedestal and set it up in the wet bay and it would keep it from freezing. So what'd you think? Did you see anything in this video that makes a big difference? I can run out and buy any of these items. And if you have any other ideas, please leave them in the comments below. Anything that has enhanced this lifestyle for you might be helpful to someone else. And as always, none of these items give us a kickback. We're not sponsored by any of these things. No. Uh, we provide these links in the description for your convenience. Till next time. Safe travels.